Okay, boys and girls, even though it is winter, I'm sure you're gonna see a lot more of this knife. So today, I thought we'd be talking about the scouting knife. Now, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Also, check out the Patreon. It's pretty awesome, too. So, let's jump into this. Okay, so this is, like I said, my scouting knife, and this is the SE Hoongless 2. Now, in a previous video I did talking about my adventure knives, I kind of alluded to this point of a scouting knife. And what I mean by a scouting knife, and I realize that this particular application of a blade will not be applicable to every single person or every single environment but here in Alaska a lot of times when you guys see me go out and you know I'm bushcrafting at whatever place you know these shelters they don't just build themselves these places they just don't find themselves so I go out into the middle of the Alaskan wilderness and kind of scout out areas to set up shelters or to set up different places for videos and so that does kind of make this a unique application but I thought I would talk about the kind of mindset behind scouting and reconnaissance and ultimately why I, this is my scouting knife and so essentially when it comes down to scouting and breaking that kind of down as its own unique kind of uh, philosophy for for wilderness operations and of course tool sets um, with scouting the objective is to run a very light very minimal setup so with my knife I will likely carry uh, things such as a personal survival kit so this is my PSK of course as we've talked about in other videos I do have more videos detailing that actual kit of course I'll be running a GPS so this is kind of my GPS pouch it has extra batteries you know a compass of course obviously the GPS in there um, so this is pretty critical stuff you know all of these things will be ran I'm also going to likely be running stuff such as my such as my Grail Geopress for water collection and water purification, and usually, you know, a few snacks or food to last a day or two. The entire objective of scouting, though, is to remain very lightweight and to move fast. So, with the idea of bushcrafting, you want to go in with a heavy, robust tool set that allows you to build things, uh, craft things, and kind of just live in the wilderness. Essentially, bushcrafting is wilderness self-reliance, whereas scouting, it's designed to be a very lightweight uh, kit or setup that can handle a multitude of different tasks for a very short term point of time and so once again that's why you run the gps you run your psk you have food for a couple days water and of course and the ability to purify water for a couple days and of course a knife that can handle a multitude of tasks so that's kind of breaking down the philosophy of scouting the idea is to not have a lot of equipment and so traditionally when i talk about bushcrafting and even survival to a lesser extent i'm always recommending you know carry a saw a hatchet a knife and use this kind of three-pronged tool system to handle all your different problems well th the idea with scouting is that you don't want to have that much weight and you don't want to have that much bulk carrying extra tools on you especially when realistically you're probably not going to use them so the idea is travel as light as humanly possible so that you can move and travel miles uh, quickly and efficiently. So that's where the SE Hoogless 2 comes into play. Now, of course, this is not the lightest knife, but when you f factor the Hoogless 2 versus a full-on camp knife, plus a hatchet, plus a saw, this is actually lighter weight than those three tools combined. And with that in mind, the Hoogless 2 is meant to take their place to an extent. Now, once again, scouting is a different type of beast. When I go in there, my objectives for using this knife is primarily to blaze trails, so either cutting down saplings, as much as people hate it, or blazing trails so that I can come back with a better tool set. The other thing that I might have to do with the reason why I run a Hoogless 2, which is a larger knife as opposed to smaller knives that would maybe just be good at blazing a trail, is the fact that if I do have to stay, once again, the idea is to go out for a day and you know, have enough food for a day and potentially more. So having a couple days worth of food, if I have to stay longer, if things happen, you know, if I need to have a little bit of survival provisions. So the same kind of rules apply with the knife. Um, 
I want a knife that can handle a multitude of tasks. So if I, in a pinch I get caught up in a rainstorm or I need to hunker down, I can build a very quick down and dirty shelter with the Hoogless 2. I can collect fire down and dirty with the Hoogless 2. I can start fires, I can feather stick, I can do a lot of those camp tasks with the Hoogless 2. Now once again, is it going to be as efficient as a BRK Bushcrafter or my JBK Layman or my 3DK MAK? Absolutely not. Those knives are dedicated to the role of camping and bushcrafting. That is what their name is and what they do very effectively. So the Hoogless 2 is not the number one choice for that, but when I'm looking for a tool that can effectively replace the, the hatchet, the saw, and the knife in a knife in just a knife form, the Hoogless 2 checks a lot of those boxes. And once again, it's not gonna be the easiest knife to use if I push it into a survival role. The most important factor is it absolutely can do that. This is kind of the idea of a one tool option. It's not designed to take the place of the hatchet, the saw, and a more specific camp knife, but in this objective of scouting and reconnaissance, even to locate points of interest, points of avoidance, and multiple different terrain features this is what you want you want a lightweight kit that is capable of doing and being pushed into survival roles so you're not going out unprepared or wholly unprepared this tool like i said is not the best survival option but it certainly is capable of doing multiple tasks if i get pinned down by weather or by accident um, this knife will be able to take care of me or help me take care of myself ultimately and be able to be used in a multitude of different settings and manners. So that's the entire objective of the Hoogless 2 for me and as far as a proper or formal scouting knife. So if you guys do see me in videos or in the future, I'm gonna be breaking down the full scouting setup going in depth of like what my GPS setup is, what my PSK setup is and everything that I do carry for scouting and reconnaissance. Uh, I will be breaking down the or I will be showcasing, of course, the Hoogless 2 there, but I thought that it was worth its own video, especially more than just mentioning in Adventure Knives, you know, what a scouting knife is, or that I use knives for scouting. This is its own kind of specific video discussing the benefits and why, if you do have a similar type of application or a similar type of role uh, with your own personal wilderness adventures, uh, having a Hoogless 2 or a specific scouting knife, above all, is a very useful addition. And once again, and that's the entire idea is having a knife that is multi-role capable and having just that knife for your tool set because it really does make a big difference when you have pounds of tools and not even just the weight but having the extra bulk of those tools and managing them so you know you have all these different knives or all these different tools hanging off your body and now you have to manage all of that and not get it caught on brush and so the idea is to move as seamlessly through the wilderness as possible now like i said a, a single tool option like this is never a full replacement and if I was going to live out in the wilderness for you know months on end I would certainly not just take a Hoogless 2. The objective is when it comes to scouting and something that I definitely want to hammer home is that scouting is a very short-term very unsustainable type of adventure or type of category for wilderness and that's entirely okay because the primary objective of scouting is to be lightweight and to be able to move fast so like i said if you're wanting to find out uh, points of interest or points of avoidance in a particular let's say three square mile area the objective is that you're not just walking in a straight line for three square miles you know you're actually walking a radius to find different points of interest or like i said points of avoidance in that area that you are hoping to operate in and ultimately find the best location to set up camp or the best location to return to so that's the objective for scouting and reconnaissance ultimately and not to sound too militaristic because what I do isn't really militaristic but I do have some degree of reconnaissance because I am trying to find new locations find locations that can be built up into suitable fortifications or you know as shelter locations for future videos or even just for the fun of it survival practice as a whole so that's the objective of the scouting knife and the scouting setup as a whole and of course like I said another video is coming probably more into the summer on 
on the actual breakdown of my scouting loadout, but that is the scouting knife for now. And uh, hopefully this video kind of serves as a nice teaser in that regard. As always guys, your feedback is very appreciated. I definitely love it when you guys comment your suggestions. And as always, God bless and I'm out.